It was 40 years before the Lewis and Clark expedition when John and William Bartram were exploring the St. John's River in Florida. Not blazing a trail, not fighting Native Americans or claiming land, but painting, sketching, and writing. William was called Puck Puggy the Flower Hunter by the Native Americans here. He's considered America's first native-born naturalist artist. John was the father, William was his son. William's paintings and sketches in the 1700s created some of the first impressions of Florida's exotic wilderness. His popular book, called Travels, was essentially the first tourism information about Florida and the St. John's River. We have a lot of people that come from all over the world to come on our trips on uh, the St. John's River because of John Bartram and William Bartram. It's unbelievable how many people follow William Bartram and he wrote one book that I know of and it's like a Bible to um, environmentalists and naturalists and they want to go exactly where he went and then read out of his journals of what he saw and, and what he described in that book is what they're seeing. Ye vigilant and faithful servants of the Most High, Ye who worship the Creator morning, noon, and eve, in simplicity of heart, I haste to join the universal anthem. That's how the original book begins. Really cool. And Bartram's Travels is, I think, the first literary masterpiece of the United States. It's a work of botany, it's a work of art, it's a work of travel, but it also is a great book. For Tom and I, just going where Bartram went, you know, that's like, uh, Wow. wow! But for a lot of people, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, they don't have that same uh, aha moment when they, when they get to these strange places that are often out of the way. And it's very important history, the kind of history you often don't find in government reports and, and other things. You have on the scene cultural observations on the Indians. He's also very useful in detailing the economic development of early Florida. Now all this kind of economic development and the relationship with the Indians got shattered by the American Revolution. But he is there at the very beginning when these very important connections are being made. This is Bartram's Ixia. It's an amazing plant. I've only seen it a couple of times. This plant occurs in moist flatwoods and uh, nowhere else. Also, it occurs where it, they burn the, the, the habitat a lot. It requires burning. It's an absolutely beautiful plant. This flower is about two and a half inches across. Here's a field of them. But, you know, it's just a beautiful plant. I worked with the Water Management District for 33 years, and my job was, the, was involved in the restoration of the St. John's River, the intent of which was to restore the river, clean it up. <clears throat> well, we had no restore. You have to know what to restore to. You have to have a starting point. And so, um, you know, we thought, well, what did the St. John's River look like before we changed it, before it began, de uh, you know, degrading? Well, I did what everybody else did. I said, well, what did it look like? I went to Google. I Googled St. John's River, you know, 1700. No images. Go figure. You know, so, so I thought, wait, you know, Bartram. Bartram was here. He, he, he gave all these great descriptions. Well, uh, so I picked up my copy of, of Billy Bartram and I started reading through it and it talked about, okay, here's what I saw, 17, you know, hundreds. Here's what the St. John's River looked like. It had these plants, it had this bottom, it had, you know, it was this wide, it was this long, and you could see through to this. Um, a perfect water quality and environmental quality picture of the St. John's River.